I'm here on the south banks of the River Thames at London's Design Museum. Coinciding with London's biggest year of sport, the London's Design Museum has opened a new exhibition called Design to Win. The exhibition will be looking at the new materials, technologies and engineering advancements that are helping athletes to achieve their goals. With new innovations and continued refinement, athletes have become faster, stronger and fitter. I spoke with the curator behind the Design to Win exhibition to find out a little bit more. Well, Design to Win is uh, basically an examination of uh, all areas where design and sport intersect. I think with um, the London 2012 Olympics currently taking place, it was a perfect time for us to look at all areas where design and sport meet and actually really look at how kind of, um, designs help push innovations in sport and push kind of the limits of performance. Uh, well, we've grouped into four different sections. So we've got the main largest one is on speed, power and performance, where we look at um, sort of the main big pieces in the exhibition. Then we have three other separate sections, one looking at sporting controversies, one looking at training and safety, and then another looking at sport and fashion. Alex was kind enough to take me on a tour of some of his favourite exhibits within the exhibition and explain the story behind them. Um, well, here we've got a display of specialist bikes used for different disciplines. Um, I suppose I really wanted to examine the idea of specialisation against standardisation. In order for things to compete at the elite level, they really have to be specialised for their particular purpose. So we have a track bike, a downhill bike, a time trial bike, a racing BMX and a road bike. And here we have the Pinarello Dogma 2 that was uh, recently ridden by Bradley Wiggins when he won the Tour de France. And they've been designed using kind of the most up-to-date high-tech computer analysis and um, manufacturing techniques. The Pinarello is a, has an asymmetric frame that uses um, computer modelling to work out where the forces on the bike are the strongest and actually loads the carbon fibre of the frame more heavily in those areas. Some of the exhibits clearly show how technology has evolved over the years to improve performance. The equipment of today often appears to mirror its predecessors. Take these two rowing boats for example. They're the same length and even the same shape. However, if you dig a little deeper, you'll find that they're actually quite different. Well, they're two single skull rowing boats, one from the 1920s and one contemporary one from today. And on the surface, they look very similar, the, um, sort of the, the, the shape and the sort of almost on the surface, the hydrodynamic performance of the two look very similar, but the difference are actually hidden within and it's to do with the manufacturing and the build. The contemporary one's actually made from a honeycomb mix of carbon fibre and Kevlar, while the 1920s one's made from sort of balsa wood and plywood using very traditional cabinet making techniques almost. And here we have Adidas's uh, sort of 2012 Olympic range and these have been completely redesigned for the current Olympics and are being worn by the, Olympics, uh, by the athletes as we speak. They've all been designed with a particular Olympic discipline in mind. So here we have the uh, discus shoe which has a smooth sole that enables the discus throwers to pivot on the spot very easily. And above it we have another throwing shoe but it's completely different. It has a very uh, spiky sole with um, screw holes that you can put spikes into and it's for a javelin thrower. So it enables them to stop when they're at the end of their javelin Right. So this is the training and safety section of the, ex section of the exhibition and we're actually looking at how different sports require a sort of safety equipment to perform a different task. So here in the helmet sections we've got um, four different cricket helmets and these are through the ages. We've got Albion's first ever test cr American, uh, sorry, uh, Australian sort of test cricket helmet and you can see how materials have been sort of introduced and new materials and innovations. So we have sort of steel shells through to plastic shells through to Kevlar shells at the ends and show how they become lighter and stronger and safer as we progress. And then similarly with Formula One, we have um, uh, Joachim Mass's um, Formula One helmet, Gerhard Berger's, and then we have Lewis Hamilton's uh, current Formula One helmet here. Brilliant. Okay, so here we have history on about the hour record in cycling. Um, Eddie Merckx set a um, uh, record in 1972 for the hour record and it's widely considered to be the birth of the modern record. Um, from then on, um, wind tunnel testing came into practice and people re realised that the aerodynamic kind of efficiency of the cycling position is actually one of the most crucial aspects of cycle design. So they started to bring in things like disc wheels and aero bars and carbon fibre monocoque frames and this meant that the record started to fall with increasing frequency and cyclists governing bodies started to get very worried that they couldn't actually compare cyclists against cyclists and look at the performance and the athletic ability of the cyclists but it was actually technology taking over. So they decided to take quite a controversial step and actually limit 
the uh, equipment that cyclists are allowed to use when undertaking a record attempt to almost identical equipment to what Eddie Merckx used in 1972. And they actually then almost eradicated the previous record set by people on the sort of high-tech bikes. So we have Miguel Indurain's Pinarello here from 1994. We have um, Eddie Mer um, sorry, Chris Boardman's famous uh, Lotus bike that he used to break the hour record as well. And then we finished the display by looking at Chris Boardman's 2000 bike, which he actually got back on a bike almost exactly the same as an Eddie Merckx style bike and broke Eddie Merckx's 1972 record record by nine meters. The exhibition highlights examples where sporting bodies have intervened to limit the effects of technological doping, where new equipment is deemed to give some athletes an unfair advantage over others. So where does human ability stop and the contest between designers, scientists and engineers begin? Um, I, I don't think technology will ever decide the winner because there are athletes that take part and it requires skill on their behalf and training and effort and practice and technique and talent. So you can never say that sort of design and innovation technology will create the winner. It can definitely help them. I think it helps to differing degrees in different sports as well and I think that's really interesting. It's wonderful to see some sports actually celebrate innovation and technology and new designs and other sports really limit it. So you've actually really got the choice to look at different ways and different sports are managed. The exhibition is now open to the public and will be running until mid-November. Let's hope Team GB can use some of the technology we've seen here today to their advantage and bring home some shiny gold medals.